today Panasonic finally unveiled the full spec list for the upcoming GH5. Now, a lot of this was rumored or speculated beforehand. We knew some of these details going in, so I'm gonna rush through those points, get through them quick, and get to the new stuff, the stuff that maybe not as many people know about. I'm gonna be as comprehensive as possible with all of the information, at least everything that's been released so far. So you can kind of think of this as everything you need to know about the GH5 prior to release. Once the cameras start shipping, that's a totally different story, and we'll tackle that when we get to it. But for right now, we're gonna go through the pros and cons, because you know how I like to do a little bit of both. I'm not just gonna praise the camera, I'm gonna point out the good things, but I'm also gonna point out the bad. We're gonna go through the pros first, and then we're gonna get to some of my complaints or issues with the camera, so we can kind of paint a full picture of the GH5 going into its release. Before we get started, I should mention that this is a video specific list. Panasonic has made it pretty clear that the GH5 is a video camera hybrid. They stressed video over anything else. And yes, you can take photos, and I know there are a lot of photographers who use the GH cameras purely for photography, but this is a video camera, it is. No question about it, they've made that clear. And as a person who talks about video production, this will be a list of all the video specific features that you need to know about the GH5. The first thing we need to talk about is the new sensor that Panasonic has put in the GH5. This is a 20 megapixel sensor and it's brand new. It is still micro four thirds, so anyone who is expecting or hoping for a Super 35 or APS-C size sensor, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I think we all kind of knew and expected it to be micro four thirds, although some of us did have hope that maybe Panasonic would increase the sensor size, but no, it is still micro four thirds with the wonderful mirrorless micro micro four thirds mount. So that means you can expect the typical micro four thirds 2x crop compared to full frame sensors. One of the biggest features of the GH5 is the ability to record 4K at 60 frames per second. So that means you can do lovely slow motion at full 4K resolution. And for even slower motion shots, the GH5 will let you record 1080p resolution at up to 180 frames per second. Now we do have to see the quality of this because the GH4 had a 96 frames per second mode for slow motion that wasn't quite as good as it probably should have been. So we'll see if that same limitation is there with the 180 frames per second, but it is really nice that you can record that extra super slow motion footage with the GH5. The GH5 also features something pretty rare in cameras of this caliber, and that's the ability to record 10-bit 422 color. Now this is only in specific modes, specifically 4K 30, 4K 24. The higher frame rate 4K mode is actually 8-bit 420, but the nice 10-bit 422 color is available in 4K 30, 4K 24, and 4K 25. And that might actually change a little bit down the road with some firmware updates, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Another huge feature for the GH5 is in-body image stabilization. This means you can use pretty much any lens and have it stabilized for extra steady shots. If you're shooting handheld or on a shoulder rig, it's really important that you have some kind of stabilization and having it right in the camera regardless of the lens is a huge advantage. This feature has actually become pretty common on a lot of different cameras nowadays, so I'm glad that Panasonic is keeping up and adding it to the GH line. And really great news for all you 4K shooters is that there is no additional crop in the 4K mode. So on the GH4, there was the standard Micro Four Thirds 2X crop, and then in 4K you had a 2.3X crop. That is no longer the case. Everything on the GH5 has a 2X crop, so you don't have to worry about 4K or 1080 having different crop modes. It's all 2X compared to full frame. Panasonic has also opted to remove the optical low pass filter from the GH5. Basically what that means is all those fine details that the sensor is capable of capturing will be captured. In the past, camera manufacturers would put a low pass filter in the camera to kind of blur or smudge those very fine details to avoid aliasing a moray. But nowadays with new technology, they can kind of remove that and keep the moray and aliasing out too. It's really nice because you get extra resolution, sharper images, better picture detail. Panasonic also says they've done a really good job at increasing the read on the sensor. That means less rolling shutter. It's still not global shutter, so there will be some rolling shutter artifacts, but it is supposed to be improved over the GH4. We'll see if it's a problem at all. I'm actually okay with the rolling shutter on the GH4, so if it's improved from that, that's great for me. Another upgraded feature that's always the case with every new camera announcement is the promise of better low light performance and better noise reduction. Panasonic says the GH5 has improved noise reduction algorithms. So I'm sure it's better than the GH4, but by how much remains to be seen. Once I get my hands on this camera, I'll be able to test and compare, but right now I'm going to be skeptically optimistic. 
stick. Another feature that's been added to the GH5 that not everyone had with the GH4 is the ability to record continuously. The camera will no longer shut off at an arbitrary time limit due to tax regulations or region restrictions. Now everyone can record forever as some people were able to do on the GH4. It just depended on the country that you lived in. Now the GH5, everyone gets the same thing. Record forever, record as long as you want. Until the cards max out, you're good to go. The GH5 is also supposed to have better autofocus. Now the autofocus on the GH4 is okay in photo mode, but pretty lackluster in video mode, especially compared to the competition. If it's improved for the GH5, that's a good thing, but it might also have some drawbacks that we'll get to in a little bit. Speaking of autofocus, the GH5 also has 225 autofocus points compared to the GH4 that only had 49. So if you like autofocus points, well, the GH5 is your camera. And Panasonic have actually incorporated some cool autofocus software into the GH5. You can now set multiple points and have the camera automatically focus between the two, kind of do a rack focus at different speeds that you can set. That's really nice. You don't have to do it by hand manually if you are in the right environment, maybe a static environment where you can set two points and have the camera do it automatically. It's really nice and hopefully will lead to some really nice looking rack focus shots. And maybe it doesn't need to be said, but the GH5 is weather sealed and has some additional weatherproofing elements, so that's really nice if you're shooting in harsher conditions. We've also got two SD card slots coming on the GH5, so you can record continuously from one to the next for extra storage space. You can record redundantly for a backup copy of all your files, or you can actually send your photos to one card and your videos to the other card, which is a really handy feature to have. And these slots are UHS-2 compatible, which means they're super fast and handle the latest and greatest SD cards for maximum write speed. This one isn't 100% confirmed yet, but it's looking pretty likely that the GH5 will use H.264 encoding as well as H.265 encoding, and you can pick the option that you want. This should open the door for even better looking footage. The GH5 also has a full size HDMI port. A lot of people were underwhelmed and disappointed with the micro HDMI port on the GH4, so it's really nice to see Panasonic transitioning to the full size HDMI and the GH5 actually has an HDMI lock, so you can really secure that cable in there and make sure that it stays put. Other fantastic news is that the GH5 has LUT support built in, so you can actually load LUTs or lookup tables right into the camera for when you're using the log picture profile, but we're gonna get to that in a little bit. In addition to the LUTs, you've also got waveform and vector scope options on the GH5 in addition to the histogram. The histogram is great for basic exposure monitoring, which was on the GH4, but the GH5 will be a lot better with waveform and vector scope monitoring, so you can really dial in your color, dial in your exposure, and make sure you're getting it right in the field. And I am thankful to say that the GH5 is not losing the anamorphic support that the GH4 had. This was a firmware update that Panasonic rolled out with the GH4, and they've transitioned it to the GH5. There will be anamorphic support on the GH5. Thank goodness. And of course, like every new camera, the GH5 has a better LCD and a better EVF. Now, how much better remains to be seen. I haven't personally had my eyes on them, but they do look substantially better than what was on the GH4. The GH4 LCD and EVF, Mm, all right, they're acceptable. So I am definitely looking forward to this upgrade. And for all you GH4 shooters out there, the GH5 is compatible with a lot of the accessories for the GH4. They are very similar in terms of body style and the batteries are the exact same. So if you've got GH4 batteries, I have a lot laying around. Those will work in the GH5. It remains to be seen if they'll be just as power efficient. It seems like the GH5 might need a little bit more power than the GH4, but I don't know that 100% yet. So once the GH5 comes out, we'll see how fast those batteries batteries drain during shooting conditions. So that is a healthy list of good things about the GH5, but it's not all good. There are some downsides to the GH5. First, Panasonic has unfortunately decided to keep Vlog L behind a paywall. I am incredibly disappointed in this decision. Vlog L should be free. For a $100 fee, it doesn't really make sense to me to keep it behind that paywall. And I know what people are saying. $100 is nothing for professionals. They'll gladly pay $100 for the log profile on the GH5. And you're right, I probably will pay the $100 for Vlog L. But Sony is incorporating log profiles on pretty much all of their cameras, regardless if they're consumer or prosumer. And the Vlog L process of having a code shipped to you on a piece of paper in the mail is totally backwards. It's time consuming, it's cumbersome, and it's just a waste. If it's only $100, Panasonic should have just put it right in the camera. Another thing I'm not very fond of regarding this GH5 announcement is Panasonic is pointing to a lot of future firmware upgrades. These are promises they're making now, and yet they won't actually be delivered until a lot later in the year. They even have phases lined up of when these things are gonna roll out. So they're making promises now that 
I don't know if they can keep. That seems kind of deceptive to me. They're saying things like, oh, 400 megabits per second, 6K anamorphic, 10-bit 422, 1080p, and yet we have to wait for all that in future firmware upgrades. This reminds me of the whole Vlog L debacle where they said, log is coming, it's coming, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. And then when it finally got here, people had to wait for it even longer because the whole piece of paper was back ordered. I will never understand how that happened on the GH4 and I don't like these firmware promises on the GH5. The GH5 should stand alone with the features that are shipped at launch. I don't want the promise of something better down the road. I want to focus on what I'm actually going to get on day one. And of course, money is always a sensitive topic. And yes, they have increased the price. The GH5 is going to launch at $2,000 for the body only. I think this might just be a sign of the times and things just getting more expensive. So I can't complain too much, but it is unfortunate that it is more expensive. It makes it that much more cost prohibitive to someone who might be interested in the GH5, but they just can't afford it. And that's a shame. But the good news is that the GH4 has gone down in price. So if you can't afford the GH5, you can always get the GH4, and the GH4 is a great camera. And now for one of my biggest gripes with the GH5, and that is there is no improvement to dynamic range. The GH4 was rated at around 12 stops in Vlog L mode, and the GH5 is rated at the same 12 stops. That looks pretty poor compared to the competition, and with this new sensor in the GH5, I was really hoping we'd get better dynamic range. Unfortunately, that is just not the case, and maybe it'll be a little bit cleaner in the log mode, hopefully, but I'm really thinking it's not going to be. What you get from the GH4 is probably what you're going to get out of the GH5. Panasonic has also opted to remove the pop-up or built-in flash on the GH5. Normally, I only talk about the video features or I like to focus on them, but it is a shame when you have something and then it gets removed or taken away. I'm not saying you should use the pop-up flash or built-in flash, but it is nice to have in certain situations where you don't really care about the quality, you just want to get the exposure right. So if you're taking photos and you have to use the built-in flash, well, too bad because you don't have one on the GH5. Now, this next one isn't really a complaint with the GH5, but more of a warning or a caution, and that's probably that you don't want to pre-order it just yet. I'll put a link to the product page in the description of this video so you can check out the full spec list, but I'd say don't pre-order it just yet. Unless you absolutely need to have it on day one, just wait for the actual reviews to come out. All the stuff we're seeing right now is pre-production and marketing material, so they may be holding something back or hiding something. Who knows, when this thing actually ships, maybe there's some kind of Achilles heel or major problem problem or issue with the GH5. I'm hoping not. Fingers crossed. I don't want that to happen. But when you look at electronics and you look at the consumer space, products come out that are great and they don't have any problems. But other times you might need a few firmware updates before it's ready for prime time. So just hold off on the pre-orders unless you absolutely have to. And unfortunately, there's no mention of custom color profiles for the GH5. So we're pretty much stuck with the same Cinelike V, Cinelike D, Standard Portrait, all the normal color modes you're familiar with on the GH4. Those are all transferring to the GH5. It's not that there's a problem with those color modes, it's just I would prefer something a little bit more custom, maybe the ability to make my own look or my own color profile and load it on the camera. That would be really nice. Maybe we'll be able to do that with those LUTs built in, but I'm kind of thinking not. It's probably just a look and not anything that's applied to the footage. And getting back to the autofocus that I mentioned, Panasonic says the autofocus is improved, but it's the same technology, just a faster version of it. If you've used autofocus in video on the GH4, you know that it's pretty quick, but it doesn't do a very good job of tracking or holding or locking autofocus. It likes to hunt, the kind of micro hunting where it's constantly checking focus. If the GH5 has the same technology and the same mechanism for doing autofocus, I don't think it's going to be that good. Even if it's faster and they've beefed up the spec, if it's still the same technology and has that similar characteristic, it's not going to be very valuable for video. Sure, it'll be faster for photographers, but if it doesn't do a better job tracking or locking and holding focus, I'm probably not going to be able to use it. So that's my list of everything you need to know about the GH5 right now. Did I miss anything? Would you like to add anything else? Feel free to leave a comment below and we'll help keep each other informed.